also know that B B is curable and H I V is treatable, and we are used to do this also. Yet, T B was not preventable for the 10.6 million people who got T B infection in 2022. It was not curable for 1.3 million people who lost their lives to T B in the same year. H I V was not preventable for 1.3 million people who became newly infected with the virus in 2022. It was not treatable for the 630,000 people who died of AIDS-related causes, and 167,000 of them died of tuberculosis. Where have we been? We could have perhaps found, treated, and prevented TB and HIV differently and better. Unless we find all people with TB and HIV and link them in optimum treatment and care, we will never be able to end TB and end AIDS to reach everyone with the best of available diagnostics, treatment and care as are offered to those in the best of centers. We have new WHO approved point of care molecular diagnostic tests that can be deployed at the people's doorsteps and diagnose drug sensitive as well as drug resistant genes. And they are being used to reach the unknown. But the progress is slow and needs to be scaled up to help address inequalities, accelerate inclusion and innovation, which again is the theme of ECASA 2023. I would like to stop here and hand over the mic to Tariko Kudatsa, Tariko Kudatsa, sorry for the mispronunciation, founder of TV People Zimbabwe, to give her opening remarks and do the honors to also do the Africa launch of global call to find all TV to stop TV. This global call to find all TV to stop TV was launched on November 3 in Goa, India by TV People India. It already has 300, and 300 endorsements just in one month. Many of them from Africa, including Zimbabwe. And some of them are here in this room with us today. Welcome, Karina. Uh, thank you so much, and you welcome everyone. Uh, as you heard, I am an advocate, not just on national level, I'm an advocate at regional level, global level. I work with many partners in TV. So on 3 of November, Africa launch of Global Board to find all TV stock to be partnership, and I was part of it. There's a lot I've learned from them. As we, as we I stand here, we cannot lie. The voice of TV is silent, especially in Southern Africa. It's so silent. And when I met with the TV people, global and so forth, they said, we want chapters in South Africa. We want a chapter in Botswana. We want a chapter in Zimbabwe. Can we do that? I said, yes, we can do that. So today, around 7 o'clock, I saw this call. I even also didn't know. I didn't know. I saw the call on the, on the WhatsApp to get my email to say, today we are going to launch through Gamma, through Stop TV, Global Stop TV. So what is TV people? TV people is a, 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 a is the global network of people affected by TV, which was initiated in 2016 in Slovakia, and I think it was registered in 2018. The vision for TV people is a world free of TV. So what we want to do as TV people is just taking TV and HIV safety to the people. That's the whole thing. Take TV and HIV safety to the people. We understand your the scientific language. We understand the mathematical measure language that they are missing TV people. They are missing children with TV, uh, children with TV. But I am saying from communities, it does not make any sense to say we are missing. We are there. 
Are we not there, people of the TV? Yes. We are there in our compounds. We are there in our at least our miners. We are there in our in our farms. We are we are everywhere with our dust with our silicone. What is missing is the service. So as TV people, we are saying, let's bring services to the people. Once we bring those services to the people, we will know that talk about it. missing NTP or missing intergate. So um, uh, TV people of Zimbabwe will work through so TV partnership. I'm a member of TV, so TV partnership. And today I'm so grateful and I'm so happy, especially the people from Zimbabwe. You are going to understand me for TV today because today I brought my, my sister there. Stand up, my sister. Yeah, and you, my, my sister, also stand up. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. This was not the history where we came from. For us, we have the TV partnership. We ran in South Africa. People pouring uh, uh, pain on us to say TV should be a community disease. Am I right? And we were challenged to say, go back to your countries, make people sign. Yes, chapters for TV partnership. Now we have got a vibrant TV partnership in Zimbabwe. The coming of Baba, the coming of TV people in Zimbabwe is not yet to commit. No, 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 no. We are part of TV partnership. But we want to enhance that voice of TV affected communities in the communities. Yes, stop the partnership. Do the, 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 the technical things, give us the tools and so forth. Is why we inherit that voice to NTV. NTV just say yes, we can. NTV? Yes, we can. NTV? Yes, we can. Uh, before I sit down, I want my, my colleague, uh, Caroline Mabushera, to come in the eight, uh, to get up so they can bring up. Uh, Thank you very much, Tano. Um, all I can say is yes, we can edge TV. And yes, we will. We will do it. Yes, we know we've just got 88 months to do it. And we will do it. Once the services come to us as people, we will do it. Thank you so much. for you from Daksa Patel, who is Secretary TV People India and former President National Coalition of People Living with HIV in India. She has sent a message to TV People Zimbabwe and she has sent it on WhatsApp so I am just reading out her message. Dear Tariro, we the TV People India heartily congratulate you and your team for launching TV, TV People Zimbabwe. This initiative of network will bring communities on one platform to address the challenges, make the pathway to improve quality of life. It will also bring human faces to the table instead only of data. It will awaken policy makers and create space for the community to design, implement and evaluate effective programmatic Back and not only remain service receivers. Our best wishes to you all. We will share our learnings actively with each other. We can have Luchipa's message. Huh? All right. We have a video message from Dr. Luchika Dikru, Executive Director, Stop TV Partnership from Geneva. Hi, everybody. My name is Luchika Ditsiwa. I'm the executive director of the Stop TB Partnership here in Geneva. I want to bring my greetings to everybody there in Zimbabwe, uh, obviously including uh, uh, Bobby and including Shobna, our friends for a long time. Uh, thank you, Bobby, uh, for not giving up and pushing the agenda forward. And I want to thank uh, our co colleagues and friends from Stop TB Partnership Zimbabwe, uh, as well as the uh, colleagues uh, that uh, from TB people uh, from Zimbabwe as well. Um, from the Stop TB Partnership, I want to just uh, uh, share three thoughts with you very much linked to this topic of uh, basically diagnosing as early as possible and treating people with TB and people with HIV to ensure we end 
these diseases by 2030. 84 months left uh, to achieve this by the end of 2030, so not a uh, long time. As you all know, uh, in uh, September, we had uh, the UN high-level meeting on TB, and uh, we managed to have uh, in it, uh, I would say, is probably the uh, best of the three uh, declarations that happened in uh, to the topics that took place in uh, September uh, this year in uh, New York. Our declaration has very concrete targets, has very concrete deliverables as percentages as well as numeric ones um, to be delivered by countries. And uh, uh, today, the Stop TB, just today, the Stop TB partnership will launch the country targets, which basically, if we want to achieve the enrollment and diagnostics and treatment of 45 million people with TB, including people with TB and HIV, by the end of uh, 2027, uh, every country will have to contribute their share. So today we are launching the share, uh, estimated share per country uh, that we are having uh, to be able to, uh, for everybody to contribute. Uh, so I am making this announcement uh, here, uh, prime time breaking news that country by country, uh, we have this, they will. They are already on the Stop TB Partnership web page, and we are sending a news alert as we speak on this topic. Uh, so it's very important. Uh, these are not, uh, how to say, set in stone figures, but these are estimates, and they have the intent of generating a conversation in each country to put ambition, but also to put the country colleagues and stakeholders to think they might not be the right numbers created from here, from Geneva, but let's have the right numbers that each country uh, will then will develop and have for their own. The second point I want to make is this. Um, in the African region, we have huge TB HIV co-infections uh, up as high as 68%. Um, malnutrition and nutrition is another uh, reason for uh, prediction of high uh, rates of TB, as well as very bad prognosis under treatment. Unless we are wrestling together to, um, uh, to address uh, the topics that we are said, you know, we will not be able in African region and globally to end TB, to end HIV, to uh, address malnutrition and so on. So uh, these days we have people living with HIV, living long lives, one in three is killed by TB. We will not be able to reach the end of HIV AIDS unless addressing TB. We are not able to end uh, TB without addressing HIV. It's not a brainer. Um, we speak that for a long time. We are not there. Uh, there is still um, a parallelism. Uh, there is still not enough getting together. I hope that the fact that the money are becoming less uh, which is a very negative development, but it's a reality of our days, as well as the entire political and economic environment in which we operate, will push us to work much better together. Because if we want to bring the services closer to people and diagnose people with TB, people with AIDS, uh, as early as possible, we need the services to come so close that there will be no barriers between the people and the service, because now we have a lot of barriers imp impeding people to address the health services. So the only solution we have is to work and support each other, is the only way forward. I'm happy that we had we will have this conversation. I am happy that at ICASA there were few conversations on TB, not enough. I hope we will have more in 2024. And from Stop TB Partnership, we remain very committed to what we um, decided to do for a long time, which is empowering people affected by the diseases to have the central role in developing the answer to words ending TB, ending HIV, ending malaria by 2030. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. And I hope that will be a great gathering. Thank you. Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, coming from India, the world's TV capital, the one area that we managed to overtake China. 
It's not a very nice feeling, but that's the reality that I bring into this room. My take on TB as uh, being part of the industry that has been uh, providing tools for, as Ruchika says, very early diagnosis of TB has shown me this, and this is my experience of the last three decades that I've been involved, that for diagnostics, we have always been very dependent on the lab. Our diagnosis has always been very lab-centric. However, I think one of the learnings that we can take from the pandemic, which hit us so badly, post the pandemic, there has been quite a global consensus that the diagnostics now need to reach the people, go to the people as close as we can. So I think that is one of the great things uh, that the pandemic has taught us, and we are very happy to be part of uh, a solution that enables uh, tools to go very near to the patient. However, in the last three decades, there has also been another learning for me in person is that whenever we've talked about technology, going to the people, there has always been a kind of a trade-off. That technology that goes to the point of care sometimes or very often lacks quality. But today again, we are very, very happy to tell you that we have now tools across the globe, wherein these tools are going to the last mile possible right into your communities. And they are probably at par with the very best that you can have in a centralized culture. So much for the industry. I think uh, I will stick to the India scenario. And I'd just like to tell you what, as a country, with the highest burden of the TV, as a country that we are doing. So pre-pandemic, we had, uh, you know, by and large, India has about 15,000 of microscopy centers, which were doing the test on this with the smear microscopy, which the first choice test that there has been for decades. As of now, as we speak, the consensus among government is that, of course, you all know that the WHO mandate is to replace the smear microscopy with the molecular test. And India as a country has decided that each of these microscopy centers, right at the block level, will mandatorily have a molecular testing facility. So as of now, as I speak to you, India as a country has nearly 7,000 facilities that offers molecular testing for TB and other diseases. And out of these 7,000, roughly 5,000 are in the government domain. You would also be happy to know that very recently, the Indian Parliament, which is the body that enacts all the laws, have given the government a very strong recommendation, a recommending that the molecular test which is developed in India be put in all the direct microscopy centers and at a block level. So that is what the intent part of the government is. As Chika says, uh, political will, because that's where the money ultimately comes from, is very, very key when we have different stakeholders participating and collaborating together to bring this to fruition. So I'm sure as we speak, and there are so many speakers from the different countries who will share their experiences, I think the time is now come uh, to kind of actionate more than ever what we've so far been telling ourselves to find TV, to find all TV and NTV. I will go one step backwards and I don't remember who coined this, but there is a very, very significant one-liner that I kind of vouch by. You know, this, this, this statement was, to, fight, to find TB is to fight TB. Unless we find TB, we will never ever be able to you know, combat TB and forget about eliminating TB. So with this few words, I would like to rest for the moment, and we will, of course, discuss going forward. Thank you very much, Shobaji, for this opportunity. Thank you very much. I'm honored to invite Dr. Anne Poya, whom you must have heard in one of the plenaries earlier at ICASA 2023. Uh, she's chief of party of on-sync health activity, that is, organized network of services for everyone's health activity in Malawi which improves access to and reduces barriers
to the delivery of priority health services. She has earlier served in Malawi Ministry of Health as Director of Planning and Policy to, uh, Development. Over to you. As chief of party, I'm now back to public service as the commissioner for the government health services commission. Uh, those of you that are aware of the challenges of uh, HRH, uh, ministers of health and governments within our region, agreed that we need to separate health workers from the public service so that we can take care of their issues. So that's where I am there now. But with regard to the ICASA conference this week, I'm here as a board member for AMREC, uh, Health Africa, the Malawi chapter, which is implementing. That's the organization that is hosting Stop TV Partnerships in Zimbabwe. So Stop TV Partnerships in Zimbabwe has a chairperson uh, that then oversees Stop TV Partnership. Jordan is the host organization. But on behalf of uh, Stop TV Partnerships in Zimbabwe, I want to acknowledge and appreciate the TV community for being at ICASA. ICASA is International Conference on AIDS and STIs. So, so many a time we have seen HIV conferences uh, purely doing HIV business. But this time around, the TV community is here. And the TV community is saying it is the TV disease that eventually kills. But TB is essentially old disease. Ladies and gentlemen, TB is curable. TB is preventable. Colleagues, COVID came less than five years ago. Where is COVID now? Why are we not doing what we did for COVID to TB? So that is elephant in the room. It is an elephant in the room because COVID came and it affected the wealthy. It affected the developed countries. It affected those that equally uh, get money and extract resources from the poor countries. And then TB continues to be there and they call it the disease of the poor. Do you understand where we are? But because it's a disease of the poor, it's affecting us, those that are in low middle income countries. COVID came, vaccines, within a few years, vaccines were there. What vaccine do you know and how old is it that is in TV? Which vaccine? BCG. How old is BCG? Why don't we have a TB vaccine? And yet within three years, we had a COVID vaccine. Not just one, we had multiple COVID vaccines. So colleagues, it is for us to rise up and tell the developing world that we need to find solutions to this century-year-old disease. We need the solutions that go to the communities to ensure that we pick the cases and they are credible, and post the, uh, the period of them being treated, we ensure that we eradicate end TB. So for it to be possible to end TB by 2030, we need the resources, we need the tools, but most importantly, TB uh, disease eradication also needs to, to, for us to fight the social determinants of health. So as long as there's poverty, right? As long as there is a hunger, we cannot end TB. As long as there is overcrowdedness, we cannot end TB. So it requires both the social constructs as well as the health constructs for us to fight TB. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Mr. Sabe Sachi Das, Strategic Partnership Lead, Geo Technologies. Hello, everyone. Um, 
I think it's very difficult to speak after Donald, as the kind of benchmark he has already said. Um, but um, I'm very happy to first of all see all our colleagues, and uh, I think last time we met was either in Union, and before that in, in, in the UNGA that happened in New York. So I'll, I'll go back to the UNGA, the UNHLM declaration. I think it was very clear. Uh, equitable access to, uh, to, to screening, testing, treatment, and care. And I think what I'll try to do uh, is maybe try to uh, unpack the word access and equitable in a way, uh, because it's a little more complex than, than it sounds. Uh, so just as, a, as a, a, a digital health partner working with um, in, in 40 plus countries with 100 plus uh, communities across the globe, I think what I'll try to do is try to bring some of the collective voices uh, from the communities. Uh, one common thing that we keep hearing from the community, and um, I see uh, our friend uh, Roderick uh, is there from Yana, so Donald is from the Esmond Joint at hand, we work very closely. Um, one of the common challenges is uh, access, to, um, uh, access to high quality screening and testing services. Um, I think, um, and if, if I have to just walk everyone through just a simulation, um, and, and you know, walk through a journey of a, a day wage earner who is symptomatic of TB. Let's imagine, and, and Ma'am talked about traveling from 20, you know, 25 kilometers far away. Just imagine a person living 25 kilometers away from Harare, where the testing centers are, who is a day wage earner, who is a migrant population, and mi migrant also we are working on the TIMS project of the minor. If you keep adding layers of complexity, coming all the way to Harare, only to, only to listen that his test results will be delivered the next day, which means he has to come back to uh, this thing. So he not only loses one day's you know, day wage, but also two days and the whole complexity. Plus he's a migrant worker, right? He might even move out. So, so what, what really happens if you can visualize, there is a test result, which may be a positive test result, sitting in the lab, and this person never comes back. This is, this is what a missing case looks like. And this has been our experience even when, uh, while working with the, the national programs. We have been supporting um, almost 20 plus countries through their uh, case-based surveillance system. I think this is also a common gap that is coming out of the national program, be it uh, household-based content investigation or PHIV screening for TPP or active case finding or lab-based surveillance. This is the same, uh, the gaps that we keep hearing is gaps in screening and, and testing services. I think um, we were also there in Union, I think many of them um, uh, who, who were also attended Union. I think one of the, I was part of a panel where uh, someone was mentioning that one of the leading cause of missing cases is, is delay in providing testing services. And again, um, I'm not talking about the gaps in just availability of testing devices, but it's so more complex than that. It's, it's like uh, Ma'am talked about and uh, everyone here talked about, Ruchika talked about, it's more complex than just availability of uh, diagnostic devices or availability of tests. It's stigma, it's discrimination, there's so many layers of complexity to get access to, um, to diagnostic services. Um, I think and, and this is, um, we are not just talking about uh, an ideal scenario, right? Um, if you again add layers of complexity, if we go back to, let's say, July 2020 in Zimbabwe, right, when the peak of COVID, the only thing that was working well was service delivery at the community level that was decentralized. That's the only thing that was working effectively. So I think, needless to say, that there's a it's not only really important, but it's crucial for, from a TV elimination point of view to have high quality diagnostic um, you know, uh, testing available at the community level, at the doorsteps of, of the people. Um, again, if we uh, add layers of complexity of humanitarian crisis, what's going on around the world, um, I'm not, not talking, only talking about Ukraine, Russia, or uh, Afghanistan, but everywhere across, Af across Africa, right? Uh, it makes so complicated to, 
um, to provide access. So unless it is community led and it is aware of the community, it's really difficult to provide access to uh, screening and testing services. Um, and just from our perspective, perspective who has been um, supporting more than 40 countries through their digital transformation, the way we look at the world from a Yes, um, the way we look at the world, um, the ideal scenario, if I have to just describe from our perspective, uh, looks something like this. You have, um, you know, um, access to...
Joint recovery, the check payments were covered as dropped from 68% uh, in 2019 to 47% in 2022. And then we have missing 16% of missing, missing cases. Um, the treatment gap is 53%. Um, and then we have a screening which is paper based. Uh, uh, as I've mentioned, I come from a Swaziland and I am a woman living with HIV and a TB survivor. In 1997, I was coughing. I didn't know what was the problem, I was getting thin. Um, I was weak. I went to hospitals and uh, nothing could help. So finally, I went to another hospital across the border. Because sometimes we cross the border from South Africa to get treatment in South Africa. So I crossed the border to South Africa, where they, I was then diagnosed with TB. So for me, it was very serious. So usually, you are diagnosed with HIV and then uh, you, 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 are, you are still for TB. But for me, I had TB first, and then the doctor said, let us test for HIV. That is when I discovered it was HIV positive. Um, I was cured. I was given medication because obviously I had the symptoms of TB. I was cured. And then once again in 2014, I got sick. This time, I didn't present with the usual signs of, of the TB. The only thing that I could tell was that I was feeling very weak. And I didn't know what was the problem. I went to the hospital. Uh, they tried everything they could do until I was paid every day. So I used to I used to get sick each and every evening. So every evening I would go to the hospital. They would let me sleep there. They would do all the tests. There was nothing that was was a problem. They couldn't uh, they, they couldn't find what was wrong. Until at last, one doctor said, Ah, let's just can we, we've done everything we can do. So now let's just test for for TB. And that was how. I, I discovered I had TB, I had TB which is extra pulmonary TB. So from there, the journey to being cured began, and I was cured. That's why I'm standing in front of you. So with this story, I'm trying to say uh, it was easy in, in, 20, in 1997 because I was coughing. But in 2020, uh, in, in um, 2014, I nearly died because of maybe the, the screening. Or TB was what was done because I would, I would go to hospital. Sometimes they would ask me, um, you know, the, the screening, TB screening is paper based. You go there, they say, they ask you, are you coughing? Uh, are you sweating? Are you what what? And sometimes uh, you haven't noticed that you, you, are, you are already sweating. And you, you don't present with a cough. So that is why my TB was missed. So having been here, I walked through the stand there and I found the one stand that was having and they were talking about a molecular uh, TB screening test uh, where they say that it can instead of using the paper that we use, we can use uh, we can screen using um, a molecular test. So for me that was a we all have been looking forward to something that is going to help us to, to be diagnosed with the paper. We missed a lot of, for, of cases because it's just a paper. I and mean, in most cases, people come to the hospital, they are rushing. So they will just say no, 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 no to everything. But with a machine like the molecular machine, I feel like if we can use it for screening, then it means all the cases that are missing. Are going to, be, to, 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 to are going to find them. And also, I asked the guy uh, uh, to, to talk more about the machine, and then they told me this machine it is easy to carry. And also, it is battery operated, and it was, they showed me a small machine. So I felt like for TB, we need more of such machines. Something that I would carry and go to the soccer field when men are watching soccer and I will be able to screen them uh, with something that is going to show me that someone has got um, TB. Something that I am going to carry to, to the meeting stand. When men, um, when men are there, 
turned into the arcade room. I will sit there, use my battery, and I will be streaming every time. Not asking, but we are physically streaming and telling them, referring them, having seen that there is something that is wrong with them. So I feel like uh, uh, for me, this is a win as a as a as a somebody that needs to get by an inch uh, because of uh, maybe not being properly screened. Ladies and gentlemen, I would say we need more of such innovations so that we we can ensure that we end TP by 2030. Uh, I thank you. We also have with us Rodriguez, an NTP advocate from TV Community Network Tanzania. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, um, I've been working with the region, especially the Southern Africa region, around TV for over 30 years. And uh, I've, been, I've lived around in the countries. Countries, just looking at the challenge that they face and the kind of 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 challenge that they face and the for me, for my country, I think it's not just because the, the rich are most affected, but back to my country, there is a lot of resources I'm getting to, to deal with how to get from the day. And uh, I could see it starting with the health care workers, the targeting the facilities, lots of things are very directed to, to deal with the country. But when we, so to, to give you the answer that, it's not that, that we don't have resources within our countries to deal with this issue, it's because there's no way to do that, especially for the political will. So how do we get that political will to ensure that everyone is part of the response? Uh, for, for all time, TV has been uh, looked at the scan issue for the needs of all the populations in the country. And we are speaking about key vulnerable population. These are not uh, they are not just not from the general population, they are from somewhere. There is a sector that is contributing to those people in population. We have the major sector. That's where there is miners, especially in our countries. Uh, there are people from, from labor. There are issues from fishing in some of our countries. They have, they have very large lakes and deep oceans. So each sector has got people that is contributing to those key populations. So how do we ensure that this this sector that is contributing that is also part of the team response. Uh, another thing that has been uh, challenging, I was looking at uh, the global fund, the current the GC7 that my country submitted to the eighty percent of the grant is so around the twenty grants. Uh, and then the other if when you go to market utilities you find that only around one percent is allocated to prevention. So how are we going to implement TB if we are only concentrating around treating it? So I think it does reach the time we need to also think around treating, preventing TB. Uh, another, another area, so as we are looking at around the world, there are lots of challenges. You can see there is more in Ukraine, currently in Israel and Pakistan. So resources are shrinking. We cannot continue depending on external funding to in order to deal with the crisis. So this is as advocates, we need to come together and ensure that there's enough resources available for, for people to access servicing, resources that are within our, our own and we can also sustain. Uh, key populations most of the time we find that it's not their fault that they are unable to access services, some because of of, of, where, of, 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 of what kind of work they do. And some of them are very indigenous. For example, if you park in Tanzania, we have the Maasai. I don't know if you know Maasai. These are people, for us, we, we see them as primitive, and most of the time they 
because if you speak Swahili and they don't understand the language, they have their language, as, and as a result, as they, they, they don't understand the, the kind of information packaging that you have, it's not the committed friendly language, so they don't understand. So as a result, they are, they are vulnerable to the disease because of, the, of, the, of, of that. So dealing with the with issues around the population, we need to understand what are their needs, and also take services and tell them about their needs. It's so not me sitting in my office uh, saying what, what should do, I take to mainlands, but ensuring that mainlands are part of the things that I'm planning to give them so that they can give their views in the kind of service that I'm providing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here we have not come to the end of the program, but we will take up some questions if anybody has them. Why is it taking so long to answer the What are the reasons for not receiving for what you've done? What is to be done? When the communities are also uh, is it our problem? Is the community not listening to us? Is the issue of what TP? What actually is the problem? What is causing TP not to end the final analysis? Would any of the panelists or more than one of the panelists? Shobhani said the call for finding all TV to NTV happened in Goa, the place where we are based. And one of the things that came out is that it is time that the community started demanding rather than you know asking very politely. It's time that you start demanding, and as just as you mentioned, if the global fund funding is so skewed that 80% goes to treatment and 20% is towards everything else, knowing for the fact that everything starts with the diagnostics first and then the treatment, 
I think the time has come for the communities to say, hey, look, what you know, we need more money for testing. We need more money for sharing information within the communities. So I think as we go back to the communities, the communities need to come to back to us in equal measure. When I say us, the funding agencies, your governments of the day, the healthcare providers, people who are in the know, and say, look, you know what? We need to have more because we deserve better. So I think as communities, the time has come to stand up for your rights. There is no single answer to that. Uh, but for me, I think it's a uh, can't blame the communities, the community that everything that we have done. Uh, I think it's uh, for me, it's around the decision makers, the, the decision to make that, uh, that are not taking this stage. It's, what's not, it's not letting us deal with the decision. If they could, we could sit on the table and together and discuss. They are making decisions and they show that they see. They are decisions that they make. They are they meet our needs. I think we can continue with the work. Hello. Yeah, there is a message from the Ikasa Secretariat that uh, it's three p.m. and those journalists who want to go to the award ceremony, they they may uh, they may go. It's at three p.m. When's the the program?
Genesis dynamic, physics dynamic. Uh, we have seen and we have heard that this G has been long dated way back. But we look at COVID, we look at HIV, a lot of vaccines, a lot of things have been innovated. Why is it it's taking too long? For in that we have dynamic solutions for TB treatment, or for TB vaccines, in fact. Are there no other scientific terms or any other scientific uh, researches that are being done for the TB vaccines? Especially, I've read on another corner whereby they are looking forward for a hepatitis vaccine. So now, we, 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 you see, we are lagging behind for TB vaccines. Then secondly, my question is, what is being done, especially for TB treatment on the uh, pediatric? We have taken too long to provide the pediatric uh, treatment on TB for, for pediatric. Because it's very hard for those children to swallow those. So please, can there be anything in solution to that? Because we end up losing the, 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 the minors, the children that are innocent just because of the negligence probably of the parents or just because that parent doesn't have much knowledge towards the, the importance of taking that TB treatment. And also, do we have the data on infection on, on children? Because in as much as I have taken notes, we now have more infections on children that's why I am in TB. So can there be some data analysis on that? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, as an advocate, I would like to say that uh, uh, HIV information has been cascaded for long and people were not speaking more about TB. Yes. This is the reason why uh, the TB issues are being set aside. So as a community, we are saying today uh, services to the TB people. We are the TB people and we need the communities to take the lead. We should uh, have strategies that are coming from the communities itself. And also the community should take the ownership. Once uh, the communities have the ownership, uh, the developers say that uh, to the people, uh, the TB uh, in Africa will be accurate. There are so many measures that you can do uh, to keep TB. Uh, the short would TB is not being uh, taken care of. So uh, we should also uh, start free uh, with the uh, TB uh, from the, the pins. And also uh, going forward uh, to the, uh, the teens and the adults. The major reasons we are leaving behind is that we are only looking for uh, the coefficient peoples and leaving other people with it uh, to be looking after. So, uh, today we are saying uh, TB people, uh, yes, we can end TB. We can end TB only if we unite and align as networks and not competing for the services, but using the services together. Thank you.
the, the world is divided between we and them. And yeah. The communities are really trying hard, but they are working in isolation. Unless we bring different stakeholders together at the table, I think it will be very difficult for them. So I think one of the message is how do we bring different stakeholders together? Uh, you know, at different forums, I've heard people talking about equity. Yeah. The reality is there is no equity. Yeah. In this world, there is no equity. So it's obvious, as he says, it's us and them. So that's the reason I said it's time the community started becoming more dominant, demanding rather than begging people to do this for us yeah. and now. But just to speak, Don, you actually took words from my mouth. Just imagine what were the simplicities of things that we did in COVID. In India, the entire COVID thing was driven by something we called three T's. Yeah. Test, treat, and trace. Yeah. Can we not do the same for TB? Okay. Of course we can. Can we be successful with the three T's for COVID? There is very little reason to believe that this will not help us in uh, TB. At least we can give it a try. So I think uh, all said and done, we should not expect equity at all. We should fight for ourselves. It's my body, it's there for my yes. rights. So if it's my body and my right, I have every right to demand yeah. what is required by my body to survive yeah. and survive well. If they had chosen 
to make sure the best of tests reach in people-centered manner to the people, probably we would have seen the difference. If they were linked to the best of treatments, we would have seen the difference. So, while the demand for vaccines, while the demand for better treatment, let us also push the governments to, to roll out best of technologies which are available today. Show us that they can make sure that the best of tools can reach today to the people. So that when we get a new vaccine tomorrow, we know how to deliver. Right? So look look at here, for example, hepatitis B vaccine. If I am, maybe I'm wrong, it's I think it's 1981 when it was approved. It's 40 years, 43 years. Female born in 1992. The molecular test 2007 or 10. Even now, right? So we, we, we right now we have temperature to point of care, molecular test, decentralized, battery operated by our case, not in the primary care centers, in the communities where you and I come from. That is a question which we should ask. Why are people not put on the treatment right on the same day when they get a diagnosis for, for TB, HIV? And the same platform can be used for diagnosing many diseases. Am I right to me? Yeah, for this one is my name. Probably not for enough question, but to just try to our minds that uh, I think we simply have not been intentional. And we have seen that it's not that our governments don't have the capacity, they do have. Today, if you discover one polio test, it becomes a national disaster. And every household will be visited by community health care workers with oral polio vaccine to all children. They go door to door. What is making it so difficult to go door to door to find TV anything else? I think the answers are just right in front of us. We just need to push our governments to be intentional. I now invite Kathleen Warren Benzi, Vice Chair of Health Communicators Forum of Zimbabwe. She is also Executive Committee Member of Global AMR Media Alliance. AMR means antimicrobial resistance, which again is stalling treatment in TB and HIV both, where drug resistance is occurring. Uh, the Global AMR Media Alliance was formally launched on November 13 this year, and it already has 150 members, and some of those stalwarts are present here in this room. Over to you, Catherine, to give your closing remarks, and also the vote of thanks. Thank you, colleagues. This has been an informative afternoon. TB affects everyone. We have had relatives who have had TB. We also have TB survivors here today. And I say thank you for building this movement. The TB people belong to the people. We have had um, jointed hands hosting TV partnership, and these are people who are known in the communities, they they are known in the media fraternity, they work with us. We also have Tamiro, her nomination to lead the Zimbabwe chapter comes from the work that she does with the communities. It wasn't a position where one applies, it wasn't a position where one applies, but it's a position nominated because someone has seen the work that we are doing. We are all doing great work. Chipiwa Day from Mashingo, she's doing massive work within the communities. Mabikwa from Mashugaland East, um, my sister from Blawayo. Everyone, if I don't mention you by name, it's not deliberate. You are also doing awesome work. So as we launch the TV people, the Zimbabwe chapter, Let's go out and find the cases. Let's, let us not stigmatize people who are on TB treatment. The moment someone is on TB treatment, 
They are no longer infectious. It's that person who doesn't know that they have TB who is infectious. And that person is, doesn't know because they need to visit the hospital or the clinic when they are ill. Our TB is diagnosed when someone is already ill, when someone is wasted. That should be a thing of the past. TB should be detected the moment it becomes active. How can that be done? That can be done when the tools and diagnostics are correct, like the molecular that we had of here at the conference. It is something that should be taken to the people. And for example, in Nigeria, they now have this portable mm, X-ray. Imagine the moment I hear of an X-ray, I know I have to visit the hospital because it's a big, massive thing. But right now, with innovation, there is the portable X-ray which diagnoses TB. It's taken to the communities in, in Nigeria. This was announced at the recent Lang conference, and Dr. Tibaiwa was present there with and other people who attended those, the conference. They know that the clinic can be taken to the people. The hospital can be taken to the people. And if it can be taken to the people, you also mentioned to me that we can even make it easier. Imagine people going to watch a soccer soap tournament 90 minutes and they are screened on entry. Within 45 minutes, they are in shelter. We will not miss any case. We, if we are to end TB, we have to go and find the cases. These people are still active. They are not in bed. If we talk of TB, we think of someone who is ill. We look at someone who is already emaciated, but the TB cases right now, they are strong. They are working. They are there in the communities. We have to find them to end TB. So if I am to say I want to go to the United Kingdom, I need to have to be screened for TB. I'm not screened for HIV. Why am I screened for TB? It's a disease that they don't want to be imported to their communities. It's a scary disease for them. So it means that we are doing something wrongly. We are not doing enough to end TB. We can only end TB if everyone is TB conscious. The moment you mention TB, if I cough and I'm in a tra public transport, people look at me and everyone is in the loss of TB. They will say, um, face in the TB. So it's something that people know exists, but are we diagnosing it before they even coughed? And when it was mentioned that TB is in Zimbabwe, it's paper screening, are you coughing, are you sweating, have you lost your appetite? If the technology gets amplified, if the technology gets better every day, you don't need to even have those symptoms maybe, because it can peak right there. And the gene expert is one machine that has been in use for TB testing. It was only at Ikaza this year that I learned that the gene expert can test for hepatitis B, hepatitis C, it can also test for meningitis. So I always like to simplify science. The gene expert machine to me becomes the oven. Is the oven because all you need to do with the gene expert is to keep changing the cartridge. It's hepatitis, you put the cartridge, the appropriate cartridge. It's TB, you put the appropriate cartridge. And so you are testing meningitis, you put the appropriate cartridge. So for me, I simplify the gene expert to say it's an oven. I want to bake bread. I make my bread dough. I put it. I get my bread. I want to make cakes. I take my bread, my cake preparation put it in the tray, have my cake. I want to have roasted chicken. I take my chicken into the oven and have it. The gene expert is a marvelous machine. It's multi-purpose. We should now demand that those cartridges be found in the hospitals because we usually get to centers and we are told the gene expert machine is here, but we don't have the cartridges. We should demand now that all those multi-purpose cartridges be there. And we can end TB if we bring the hospital to the people. If we get also that small X-ray that is being used in Nigeria. And for Zimbabwe, we always have prevention as a pivotal. Thank you. Thank you. This is the X-ray view. This is the X-ray view. We always know the X-ray to be something a big bed where we 
line facing up in the machine, I would say. But this is the expert. Thank you very much, Doc. It is portable. And imagine our village, uh, the community health workers in Zimbabwe, we call them the foot soldiers. They are right there in the community. They are carrying that machine. They are screening people. How many cases will be missed? Zero cases will be missed because the machine is portable. It can be used. So thank you again for attending this. And thank you for coming to Zimbabwe. Uh, before thank you, Mr. Thompson, there's a very important thing, and we have saved it for the last. I would just like to add what Kathleen has just said. It would be like to underline. She said, pay hospital to the people. The machines, you know, there are certain machines which WHO has approved, they are in the laboratories. How many of you have seen laboratories? Big, big labs. Yeah. You have seen, right? They are in the big hospitals. Yeah. But WHO has also approved point of care decentralized lab independent machines which can operate right here and see the magician. <laughs> Get the seeds right there, and you can do the test like that. The X-ray which you saw is battery operated. It's a WHO proof, and there, uh, and that's the screening tool. And those who test positive, they go for this. So this is the whole machine. No laboratory, no air conditioning, no electricity required. In Democratic Republic of Congo, if you go to Stop TV Partnership website, it is used on solar power. So this is a two-hand machine. Is the only WHO approved decentralized point of care? So as she said, there are two uh, two platforms that are endorsed by the WHO. The first being the expert. Um, it's a great machine. There's all the big laboratories and the hospitals have the expert. But in Zimbabwe, you also have the TrueNAT introduced, and the 22 TrueNATs that are in Zimbabwe are at the extreme borders of your country. Now just imagine, this is our community. Yes. Just imagine, within the walls, this is our community. Yes. Sitting on a chair and with the one square meter table, we will be able to test for TB, HIV for each one of you, right in this setting, which is the least <laughs> of the laboratory that we know in our minds. It is completely decentralized and the country of Zimbabwe has shown the way to the global community and what settings, in fact, uh, some of the presenters from Zimbabwe, when they presented, they have shown pictures of some of the places where Trunet is placed. So I can give you a pictorial. It's like I don't have a screen, but there is one side of the room, all the cows sitting, chewing their cut, and on the other side, a stream of expectant presumptive cases waiting for their tests to be done. And the table on which the Trunet is sitting is half eaten by mites. Yeah. And this is a reality. So you can imagine when we say that the point of care, WHO endorsed, anywhere, anytime platforms are there, we are walking the talk. Yeah. It is right in front of you. No electricity, no nothing. Sunlight is the only thing that you require, and that is free.
Thank you. In Zimbabwe, we join this fish when everything is available. We call it gango. So I think this machine, if it can have 40 diseases tested, little in gango. Thank you. And thank you. I hand it over to the boss.